Good morning, it's Teresa McAuliffe here from Lighting the Way and I hope you're all staying safe and keeping really well and not missing your colleagues and your family too much. It's very important that we keep ourselves in a balanced state at all times but it's very easy for us to be pulled out of balance at the moment. So as I said, each week I'm going to work on um, a chakra. Last week I started on the base chakra. So chakra means wheel. So it's a wheel of energy. So we have seven major centers in our body. And again, I talked about this when I did the base chakra video. And today we're moving up to the next chakra, which is the sacral chakra. And if you put your hand on your belly button, three finger widths below, that's basically where this chakra is located. So the base chakra faces down and then we have the sacral chakra and that's the first chakra that faces both out and in. So, you know, we are energy beings and our energy, whether we like it or not, is determining how we're feeling and the health of our body at any given stage. So the sacral chakra is something that's really important for us at this time. It's our chakra where all our relationships really towards ourselves and towards others are really determined as to whether they will be healthy or unhealthy. So I have quite a few notes with me and I just want to make sure that um, I don't miss anything because it's it's basic stuff that I'm covering with you, but yet it's vital stuff and it's enough for us to be practical about looking after our energy centers. And especially now in this time of great turbulence and a lot of fear. And yes, there is a lot of misinformation out there and you know, not tuning in at all times is really important for our mental health, for our emotional health. And the chakra that we're working on today, the sacral is all about feeling it's all about emotion, it's where we hide our shadow, it's where it resides, so all our addictions, all our compulsions, all our need to control are all held in this chakra. But so is all our creativity, all our beautiful way of dealing with people, how we relate to ourselves, how we feel so good about ourselves, our sensuality, our sexuality it's all held in this center of our body so it's really i suppose a kind gift to all of us to be able to understand a little bit about our energy centers our chakras their wheels of energy remember so you know we started with the base and we have the strong foundation where we feel safe and secure and held and supported and there's a video on that from last week and it's posted so if you want to go back and do it i would really ask everybody to work through their chakras at this particular time because all of our energy, no matter who we are, has been individually and collectively pulled out of balance. So it's really important that we work on ourselves because everything that we do for ourselves, we're actually doing collectively as well for everybody else. And even imagine the people that are in your household around you and your relationships changing because of how you're balancing your energy within yourself. So creativity is huge in this area. So we kill the chakra, we tighten it up when we stick with you know, jobs that are just there mundane for us, uh, just to pay the bills, just do this, just do that. We really do need to be expressing ourselves as the individual soul that came in here to express itself. So if we can't do this through paid employment, it's really important that we do it through hobby or through volunteering or whatever way that's creative enough for us to basically work and balance this chakra. So that's just one thing. I'm gonna go through a whole list. I have um, a flip chart here, you can't see it, but I'll turn it when it comes to it, but it'll be back to front because I flipped this camera because I'm just on my phone and uh, it's, it's easier for me to just do lives because it doesn't take up space in my camera and I don't have to set up my good camera and load it back on and it's just too much difficulty. So. What I've said here is located below the navel, so about three finger widths below the navel. So it's front and back, so it's your lumbar spine as well. So the base faces down, these chakras face both ways, okay? Uh, ease in relationship, pleasure in physical contact. And 
it's the life force and it's that feeling so all sensuality everything so sometimes we say be creative we think of like sculpting or painting or dancing or something like that but it can be something really uh, simple for us and something practical like cooking a new dish not bothering with a recipe and just trying things out and saying oh i wonder how this would do it could be blending essential oils and saying hmm, i wonder how this fragrance would go with this and just look up the properties and say hmm, what would that do with this and make sure obviously if you're not an aromatherapist you have to be careful with essential oils i'm just giving examples my eight-year-old grandson um last night read a story for me and showed me because we did a video call he wrote a small story yesterday and he had all these little characters little dogs and saying rough and you know uh, he had the whole story was and he'd sell it pages out of a copy book together and he'd made a book out of it and he had a picture in the front and he had green grass and everything and i was like to myself i didn't say anything to him about chakras but i just said to him that's really nice that's going to keep you really happy and healthy so that was enough to say to him but we can encourage our children without well we can tell them if we feel it's appropriate um but i just feel that for all of us at the moment creativity is there for us to to take and to experiment with because i know that most of us that are um, I suppose working for ourselves anyway and most of us in the country apart from the frontline workers are at home at the moment whether you're working from home or whether you're not employed at the moment um, we're all doing something this is created for me to help online because I don't have work either because my work is very much hands-on with people whether it's workshops or one-to-one -one healing or coaching sessions that distancing don't work so I haven't been to work for a couple of weeks now but I actually have been quite busy working here. I'm creating, I mean, somebody's doing it for me, but I have to obviously gather all the spiels and everything I want to say, so I'm getting a new website done. Um, and there are things that we can do to create. So let me see what else I have said here. Do we allow ourselves to express ourselves freely? So this is really important for the health of this chakra. So if we feel that we're just numbing our feelings and maybe giving our power away, giving ourselves away, just saying yes to somebody in our life that may be more dominant than us, that's really, really bad for our sacral chakra because it tightens it in, tightens in our expression of ourselves and our freedom to be who we really are. Because it really is about flowing creativity, feeling sensual, feeling attractive, in touch with your emotions, and you know, during this time, it's very easy for us to hang around in the pyjamas or something all day long. It's actually not healthy for us. It's really important that we feel good about ourselves and, you know, get up and show up and dress ourselves up, even if we are only going to be doing something in the house um, and we're not going to be meeting anybody. Do it for yourself. Do it for the people that are around you and allow yourself to feel really good. You know, it, uh, what I've written here, when we resist ourselves, we experience shame uh, for living passionately. So we feel ashamed, you know, if we don't feel good enough, if we don't feel confident enough, we actually have the energy of shame running through us. And that actually holds our sacral chakra tight, not more than the sacral, but I'm working on the sacral today. Um, so do we allow other people to control us? Do we control ourselves? Do we say, God, I shouldn't do that. Oh no, God, when I was a child, I was told, don't do that. And, you know, there are loads of reasons why we actually hold ourselves back, how we constrict ourselves, how we stop ourselves doing what we really, really want to do. And um, there are lots and lots of things that we can do to express ourselves. So if it's malfunctioning, very often we have digestive problems. We could have irritable bowel syndrome. We could have ulcers. We could have circulatory problems. We could have diabetes because it looks after all of the organs that are in this area of our body, the bladder, the spleen, the kidneys, and lots more. And some of the glands that are down here in this area as well. So we remember that the energy, you know, it organizes itself into chakras. Okay, so we have more than seven. We have actually thousands of chakras, but we have seven, maybe eight. I, I think we have eight major ones, I feel. <laughs> we have eight major ones, but we work with the seven major ones that have been talked about for thousands and thousands of years. And each chakra gives your body energy, it receives energy and it gives out energy. So it contracts and it expands. And it really um, looks after our vibration. And each chakra has a different vibration. 
So the bladder, the adrenal glands, the sexual organs, they're all governed by this chakra as well. So remember, it's the feeling chakra. So three finger widths below the navel, and this is the area. So it's, it's really nice to be around someone that has a balanced sacral chakra because they'll be lovely and peaceful. They'll be easy to communicate with. They won't be trying to control you. They won't be holding back. So they will be just free to be themselves. They will be expressive. And that would be really nice to be around somebody that's like that. They allow you to be fully yourself and they remain fully themselves as well. So it, I suppose this chakra is also about indulgences and I'm not talking about over indulgences, but I'm talking about looking after yourself and having the pleasurable feelings of doing things for yourself and really allowing yourself without guilt and without shame to be able to indulge. Now, this is where the little bit of the tipping of the balance comes in here because if we overindulge, it can turn into an addictive behavior and then this is the shadow that resides inside in this chakra. So I will give you some tips on balance for this chakra, things to do, very practical everyday things. I'm a very practical person myself and if I can just work it out that I can do this, this, this and this, I'll give you a lot of tips. Some of them won't work for you. Sometimes you might just get sick of doing something to balance your chakras. You don't have to be thinking about it all the time. But if it comes into, you know, good habit, it just gets very easy. So um, unhealthy power dynamics is something that when this chakra is out of balance that goes on. So we have a lot of um, codependent relationships, not just the, in Ireland, but all over the world. Uh, people trying to control others and people trying to control even what they do themselves so that they can fit in. You know, we weren't born to fit in. We were born to stand out. Um, giving ourselves away, you know, and saying yes when we actually really mean no. Uh, it pulls our sacral chakra totally out of alignment. So it resists and it chokes the flow of energy that goes through that chakra. Uh, we must have our full power and let others have their full power at the same time. So I'm talking about interdependence here, really. So if we can be fully ourselves and we can allow somebody else to be fully themselves without criticizing, without judging, without ridiculing, or blaming them or ourselves, that's a very good sign that your sacral chakra is flowing beautifully, the energy is flowing beautifully through it. Um, and again, I just said, don't live a life just to pay the bills. Find something that will actually stimulate you and allow you to feel free and expressive and to feel that you're in the flow um, so don't be inhibited you've got to surrender to rules and regulations that you've placed upon yourself or that maybe somebody else has decided to place upon you and check in check in with yourself check in with your feelings because it's really about feeling this chakra does it feel right and if it doesn't it's out of alignment um, so there are certain exercises that are very good to get the energy flowing in the body. So yoga, especially Kundalini yoga for this particular chakra. Tai Chi, if it gets the energy flowing. Qigong, Qigong is something that I've taken up myself in the last two years. And I'm a student of Master Chauffron. So, you know, I broke my right hand in the end of November, 26th of November, I'll never forget it. So my hand is just about able to do the postures now. And, uh, I have a very good partner who is very patient with me because I tend to forget them and uh, he slowed down for me yesterday and did the postures with me so I'm delighted that I'm able because I have tried it a few times and my hand wasn't able to do the movements so now I'm back and swing. So Qigong would do it for me, walking in nature would do it for me, I'm sure it would do it for you. So you know the element is water, the colour is orange, hence the orange nails, orange top orange flowers, anything that will remind you of looking after the health of this chakra will be really good. So because the element is water, walking by the water, and I know now that we have social distancing in place at the moment, but there are plenty of beaches if we're coastal, there are lakes, there are rivers, and if you can't do that, soak in a bath, put your feet into a basin of water, be creative, just find a way to actually get yourself into the water, drinking loads of water. Of course, it's important at all times, but it's really important for the health of your sacral chakra. Um, and if you breathe deeply, right down into the belly, okay? And if you take a breath, I'll do this with you in a minute, and imagine that you're breathing into the bottom of your back, you're also sending the life force energy into this chakra. 
and you're sending it in with the intention of rebalancing it and allowing it to flow freely and allowing it to let go of any residual stagnation that may be in that chakra and um, there are lots of crystals that you could use and not everybody has crystals at hand at the moment but some of you have uh, red jasper i've written a few down cornelian pyrite amber orange calcite tiger's eye and out of all of those um i have a tiger's eye in my pocket i tend to take crystals with me so tiger's eye will help the base chakra as well so at the moment we really need to balance the three lower chakras and feel safe and secure and powerful so anything that I just grab these bunch of crystals so anything that has like orange or brown in it um just sent to murray if you were watching these you'd know all these crystals whereas uh, for me i just sort of innately know which crystal to use but i don't remember their properties too well um <clears throat> then you know we can have essential oils so if we do have essential oils in the house and we do know how to use essential oils of course anything that comes from the oranges or from the plants of orange and i just left a few out here i'm not sure you can see all the way back here so the petty grain would be one uh orange would be another and actually fennel um, would be really good for this chakra because it's for digestive system um rose mandarin uh, patchouli patchouli brings peace um they would all be good and there are quite a lot of other oils saffron and in foods paprika cinnamon um you know orange teas carrots oranges anything that's orange or brown based sweet potatoes even potatoes themselves they'd be all really good to balance this chakra um turmeric peppers anything in peppery is very good for the sacra chakra garlic melons mangoes asparagus and the list goes on you know um so some practical things that we can do to get this chakra into balance so remember now we had the red for the base and the foundation and the security and the stability and now we're moving up into the creative self into the sensual feeling part of us where we start to be really kind to ourselves and communicate you know with ourselves is beginning to really feel our power because we're going to the power center next week but we're beginning to balance this because it's going to help us then to just move freely up into the next center and each center obviously it, it governs that area but it also affects the area that's next to it so you can imagine if your sacral is very slow and maybe stagnated and closed off and constricted so you know your next center which is your solar plexus you know and, and that's going to be very restricted as well because the flow of energy has to come up through you know so um i really would encourage you to go back to the basic one if you haven't done the root chakra and i do have a whole chakra clearing video up on youtube as well and you could just listen to that meditation because it goes through all the chakras but doing things to keep the chakras balanced is really important and understanding why you're doing it and what's for what center is important so creative projects uh, i've written in here i feel pleasure and delight in the flow of life it is safe to feel so it really is the feeling chakra uh, again riding a bike or walking along a riverbank or by the ocean and if you if you can find a place to walk by the water where there's nobody around uh, where there's enough room to distance yourself properly is fine long warm showers or soaking in a bath would be a substitute for all of that um being true to yourself and being truthful to others drinking lots of water wearing orange clothing embracing your sensuality maybe taking aromatherapy baths at the moment obviously we can't have a massage not unless we're in a house where our partner or our daughter or somebody is a masseuse or would be willing to massage as we are not allowed to go out for a massage at the moment any sort of hands-on healing would be really good for this chakra so i suppose the healing can be done distant just as easy as it can be done hands-on because it's done through intention and through connecting and through energy so it's energetically done so that works really well uh, walking barefoot especially outdoors would be really good obviously good for the base as well so the base and the sacral chakra were once one wheel of energy but through evolution they split into two so that's why a lot of um 
what I would offer for the base would kind of double up here. Um, putting a vase of orange flowers on the table, maintaining a positive outlook. Um, afternoon naps, again, looking after yourself. Um, leg pulls. And um, one of my sons, he'll know who I'm talking about once he, if he sees this, when he sees this, uh, would always ask you to catch his heel and pull his leg. It's, it's actually really good for rebalancing the sacral chakra. Self-nurturing meals, um, and again, healthy eating, meditation, um, naturally sweet foods, okay? So I'm not talking about foods that we make, like cakes and things with a load of sugar in them. I'm talking about things like dates and pears and maybe nice sweet apples. Naturally sweet uh, foods would be very good for us. Um, feeling joy, so laughter yoga, and during the week at some stage, I'm going to do a, a very short 15 minute video um, specifically on laughter yoga. And laughter yoga is about raising our levels of joy. And obviously it's like an antidote to stress and to fear. And if you think about it, um, even at uh, funerals and very sad things, what we do is, you know, we meet up afterwards and we laugh because it really is for the soul, okay, so it helps us to connect back in inside with the joy that's inside of us. It helps us to clear anxiety. So like if our sacral chakra is really open, um, we can have very high anxiety. So balancing it is really important. And then if it's very closed off, we can feel very withdrawn. We don't feel really creative. We block ourselves from many creative projects. We might have ideas and we think, no, I couldn't do that. Um, and we just uh, need to just open it by being creative and expressing ourselves and again not overindulging okay because remember it's also the chakra where we hold our shadow so for addictions of all types um we can hold them here not giving ourselves away you know taking control of you know our freedom and allowing ourselves to express ourselves for who we really are uh wearing this orange you know and again if you can wear orange in the bottom half of your body because we're working on the lower chakras so the three lower ones and then we come to the heart which is in the center and then we'll do the three higher ones but we're working up so we're creating our base and we're creating the balance because that's the way the energy has to come through we have to have a strong foundation so sexuality the nature of your relationships freedom from guilt pleasure and nurturance sensation and creativity so that's the objective for us really for balancing uh, this chakra so everything in balance so we're not over sexual we're not under sexual we're not addicted to any foods or any habits or any substances but we are allowing ourselves to have pleasure in a balanced way so i think that really is um enough for you to um go out and balance your sacral chakra and until next week, don't restrict the flow of energy, just allow it to flow. So remember those little tips that I gave you. So the water is really important. Drinking lots of water, if you can walk by the water, if you can wear something orange, eat foods that are orange. If you have some of those essential oils I was talking about, anything that's orange based, of course, it'd be really good. If you have any crystals, again, that are for the base and the sacral chakra, as, as simple as a tiger's eye, and like a lot of us probably would have a tiger's eye and if you don't there are a lot of stores online where you can order one um be true to ourselves being soft being gentle doing our best to be peaceful and that's it for today so um again i'm going to just say bye for now and thank you for being with me and it's my pleasure to help in any way that i can so before I leave, I'd like you to do something with me. We will just visualize this chakra. So if you want to close your eyes for a moment and just allow yourself to be. So as we take the next breath in, we'll imagine that we're breathing into this area, just below our belly button, three finger widths down. We're sending the life force energy down with the breath into the sacral chakra. And then we're just releasing any resistance, any behaviors that are of addictive nature. 
any shame, any guilt, any fear. With the next breath in, I want you to breathe into your lower back. So again, it's the same chakra I'm working with. So we're going to breathe in through our nose. It's in that breath down and imagine that it's going right into the lower back, into the lumbar area. And just allow yourself to imagine that you can feel the breath of life flowing freely into this area, freeing you of any restrictions, any inhibitions, any blockages, any resistance in this area. And allowing the life to begin to flow freely here. Allowing you to open up to express your creative self in the way that's right and healthy for you. So we'll just breathe into this area again and we'll imagine a spinning wheel of orange light, a vital life force light, revitalizing, re-energizing, balancing this area of us. Feeling that now down in the sacrum. Soft, peaceful breaths into this area, allowing you now to feel your true self, feeling sensual, feeling gentle, strong, truthful, feeling balanced. And as you breathe out, just release now. all the restrictions, everything that's out of balance. Let go with the out breath. So we're breathing in now, along the balance, down into this area, seeing a beautiful wheel of orange light moving in a clockwise, which is the bright yellow sunshine color. Allow yourself to relax and bathe in this beautiful energy now. And it's this simple, it's this easy to bring ourselves right back into balance. I've left my door of the healing room open here. I'm not sure if you can hear the birds in the background. Sometimes you hear the sheep and the little lambs bleating over your feet. Okay, so for today, God bless you and thank you all.